I'll talk about supply chains because that is what I research about. And my pitch, which I said in my mini speech, was that we are all consumers. We're all part of a complex supply chain network. Supply chains are complex. But the question that we wanted to answer was, how do these complex and global supply chains and international trade affect a country's ability to progress towards the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals? These global and interconnected supply chains have a range of environmental and social impacts, from productivity to economic growth, from job creation to income creation, to environmental impacts in the form of air pollution, emissions, when goods are produced for consumption, deforestation for our demand for timber, for our demand for food, which is really driving species at the brink of extinction. Our supply chains are diverse. The food that we eat, the clothes that we wear, the energy that we consume, the travel that we do, the buildings that we live and work in, they're all part of a complex supply chain network. And those networks don't often originate in the countries that we live and work in. They're very much global. The things that we consume oftentimes are produced in borders far, far away. So really, we need to think about our consumption patterns. We need to think about where the materials are coming from, which are resulting in these environmental and social impacts in supply chains. So we set about to put a consumption lens on the otherwise nationally focused United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And to do this, we identified 12 goals, and for each of those 12 goals, we put a consumption-based proxy. So for example, for SDG 1, we had data on poverty. For SDG 13, we had data on greenhouse gas emissions. And for other SDGs as well, we put a consumption-based proxy, which we linked to the SDGs for analyzing global supply chain impacts. Our work also had relevance to planetary boundaries, climate change, for example, biosphere integrity, land systems change, freshwater change, biogeochemical flows, and atmospheric aerosol loading. Now, if you're wondering how do you actually assess global supply chain networks, well, it starts off with data on international trade. So we need information on exports, we need information on imports, and we also need information on what is traded. So what detail did we work with? We had information for 164 regions of the world. So 160 individual countries and four aggregated regions of the world. And for each of those, we had data on 97 sectors. And our sectors could be agricultural sectors, broken down into different commodities, manufacturing sectors, energy sectors, service sectors, information for 97 of those for 164 regions of the world, which we integrated with the 12 SDG-relevant consumption-based proxies, which we wanted to analyze as part of this work. We ran a consumption-based assessment, and that involved using the high-performance computers at the University of Sydney to analyze billions of supply chain networks to connect producers with consumers via intermediate trade routes to see where exactly are impacts taking place in terms of emissions, in terms of biodiversity threats, land use, water use, and other social indicators that we analyzed. I must stress this was a team effort. So the work that I'm presenting today is part of a multi-institution collaboration, not just with academia, but also with the United Nations Sustainable Development Solutions Network. So they came on board because they wanted to understand what these spillover effects are around the world. If I present the key findings for the 12 SDGs that we analyzed, some are experiencing equalizing trends. So there are some positives of international trade. So trade, as I said, promotes economic growth, jobs, income growth in countries around the world. So for some SDGs, for example, SDG 1, we have seen an improvement over the 29-year period that we analyzed as part of this work. But for some indicators, primarily environmental indicators or environmental consumption-based proxies, we see a strong polarizing trends, which means that consumption is actually hindering progress in, in parts of the world 
due to the international trade network. And SDG 13 is one example of that. So greenhouse gas emissions and the trade network with the production and consumption systems is causing polarizing trends in certain parts of the world where certain countries have reduced emissions at the expense of a rise in emissions in their trading partners. Now, the results that I presented were high level, so they were at a global scale, but we also aimed to categorize countries in terms of whether a country is a net exporter, net importer, and whether over time, on average, they are trending more towards net export status or net import status. And for each of the SDGs that we analyzed, we had countries that we were able to place in this four quadrant uh, diagram that we came up with. And if we just stress on two of the SDGs, and I pick out SDG one as one example, which is um, no poverty, the common trend that we observed over the 29 year period was that P refers to the production-based impacts in my diagram, and C refers to the consumption-based impacts. There has been a decline in poverty over time within nations and also in the trading partners of the countries that we trade with. So from a consumption perspective as well, there has been a decline, as we observe, in our trading partners. So an example or an illustration of an equalizing trend. If we look at another SDG, SDG 13, where we observe a strong polarizing trend, we observe that there are two quadrants that we really need to take notice of. In one of the quadrants where we have countries which are net importing and import trending, we see that the consumption-based impacts are much higher than the production-based impacts. So there are countries around the world that are relying on production in parts of the world, in their trading partners, which are having to deal with these environmental impacts or these uh, greenhouse gas emissions for satisfying their consumption. And there are countries around the world where the production-based emissions are higher than the consumption-based emissions. These are the countries which are producing goods and services which are consumed elsewhere around the world. Now, the funding, um, thanks to the Frontiers Research Foundation, would really enable us to expand this research. So this was a step towards identifying, at a global scale, these polarizing and equalizing trends, but we need to assess what is happening at a sector level. So how are different sectors interacting within countries and across countries in contributing to these spillover effects? So the work would involve assessing sector-level interactions to identify hotspots in supply chains, which we could target. Would also involve unraveling local and global spillover effects, linking up those supply chains locally with, with global effects, and also getting businesses on board. So developing tools and frameworks and techniques that would allow businesses to quantify their impacts across borders. So cross-border impacts of international trade, not just at a national level, but also supporting businesses in their journey towards sustainability. Our work proposes to broaden the indicator framework. So the SDG indicator framework is traditionally nationally focused. We need to put a consumption lens so we're able to see what our impacts are, not within our borders, but also outside of our borders. We need to routinely measure spillover effects and feed that into devising relevant and just policies. But really at the heart of all of this, and I echo here comments from the colleagues and the collaborators that I've worked with over the years, particularly Professor Manfred Lenzen, we need to take courage to make difficult choices because consumption really concerns us all. We need to take difficult choices to really turn the dial. We really need to accept that our actions carry impacts. We need to act to address those impacts, and we really need those things to achieve sustainable and just supply chains. Thank you.